Hello everyone, and welcome back to our video on building the Sarissa Precision Trebuchet for our game based on the Siege of Acre in 1291. Uh, before I got started on the trebuchet, I built one of the carts that came with it just kind of as a practice. I did do some damage to it. Uh, I managed to actually bend the uh, the chassis frame right here. So as an important lesson, there's some delicate parts that I have to be very careful with. Uh, I also put together the base frame that consists of the loading frame and the outrigger frame. Put them together and you have this base which is going to be where the trebuchet rests. My favorite thing about that process was this spacer here uh, which you can use just to make sure that the holes in the different parts of the frame are lined up before you glue them together. Um, that's actually not a part of the finished model, it's just used for spacing uh, as you're putting it together. So I thought uh, that was a really useful component. Next up, we have the throwing arm. Uh, this consists of a bunch of different components. There's an axle here, as you can see, uh, that the arm itself is going to pivot on. And that axle at the bottom, that's where the bucket that holds the counterweight is going to be. And then there's a hole up the top where the sling for the projectile is going to go. And the next step is we're going to expand these uh, cross-section plugs in the middle, and we're going to turn them into a cylindrical axle. Of course, a cylinder is quite a tricky shape to do in MDF. Uh, and so what we're going to do is piece by piece, we're going to glue these disc-shaped spacers around the axle frame until we have the, uh, the cylindrical axle. And then when that's done, we're going to sand that all in place uh, to make a single cylinder. Um, so this is just going to be a moment or two of me stacking cylindrical spacers onto the the frame. So I thought I would read you this excerpt from a letter that actually relates to trebuchets, or at least to siege engines, um, and I think sheds a little light on their importance. This is uh, from the First Crusade. Uh, from It's about the Battle of Antioch uh, in 1098, or the Siege of Antioch, I guess I should say. And it is from... The people of Lucca on crusade to all faithful Christians. Uh, and it tells the story of a man called Bruno, who was a, I, a, maybe a sailor. It says he went with the ships of the Angles even to Antioch itself. And he says, they're quoting him here, When we who were voyaging by sea had come to Antioch, the army, which had gathered together from everywhere by land, had already surrounded the city in siege, though not very well. On the following day, our princes proceeded to the sea for the sake of visiting us. They urged us to get together an abundant supply of wood for the construction of war engines, which we did at great expense. So, again, this reinforces the point that Steve Tibble makes in his book about the importance, um, again, of Italians, although this seems to be an Italian sailor in an English fleet. This is the same, or well, I don't know if it's an English fleet, but it's the same fleet that uh, Edgar the Atheling is in, I imagine. And um, how that logistical support, uh, both of kind of engineering knowledge and of the resources necessary to build siege engines, uh, proved vital to successful crusader sieges. Um, anyway, uh, I just thought that was a, a, an interesting perspective to share about the trebuchet. Um, as you can see, I'm just about finished uh, putting together the axle, or this half of the axle. It's quite a repetitive process, so I'm only going to do one half of the axle right now just to kind of show how it's done, and then once the video is over, I'll go back um, and I will do the next one. Th these are quite fiddly to put together. That's important to create the correct cylindrical shape. You know, one of the really interesting things about the trebuchet is that, you know, in some ways it's a very good kind of being, you know, built of big beams or planks. It fits very well into a, an MDF kit, but in other ways it doesn't, and so the designers have had to be quite creative in order to build shapes that don't normally, you know, that don't um, go together well or very naturally out of uh, flat MDF pieces, and I think they've done a very good job on that. So as you can see, we've got a cylindrical axle. The next step is uh, I'm going to add the bucket. Now I'm actually not going to completely install this just yet. Uh, I just thought I'd take a moment here to show you how it fits on, but the reason that I'm not going to uh, put it on permanently is I think it's going to be easier to uh, build a counterweight. You see the bucket has an open top, so I'm going to add something in it to represent the counterweight, and I think that's going to be easier, and it's going to be easier to paint as well if it's not already attached to the throwing arm. So I'm going to leave actually putting on the bucket until quite late in the process of assembling the trebuchet. You can 
take it off uh, and put it back on again. You know, once it's uh, once the bucket is complete, uh, the, there is a little bit of flex in it. But thanks to my earlier experience, I'm a little cautious about bending the MDF pieces, and I'd rather just uh, not take the risk. So I'm going to leave that off for now, but I just wanted to show you uh, how it goes on. So the next step is going to be I'm going to do the other side of the axle, and then after that, we're going to get started building the vertical frame of the trebuchet. And I think that once that's done, it's really going to start looking like a trebuchet. So I'm excited to show you that in next week's video. Uh, or, well, hopefully it'll be next week anyway. Uh, and then we'll go on to adding the the wheel, which is the other major part of the trebuchet. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time as we continue this task.